And he singles out one person and calls that one his son. If that one is his son, and that one stands before you at the end of your journey, and then memory returns, for it's only God returning in memory, for we are the God, forming the God. And if in the beginning there was a fatherhood that is God, and fatherhood implies a sonship somewhere, and if that son stands before you, and then suddenly memory returns, and you know he is your son. And he knows you are his father in the fulfillment of scripture. Then and only then do you know who you are. I could tell you from now to the end of time that you are God. You aren't going to believe me. Because if I am God, why can I do this, that and the other? You do not know the purpose behind the affliction, the contraction that you impose upon yourself. You did nothing that was wrong to bring about this contraction. It was deliberate on our part. We agreed in concert to dream the dream of life and to come down into the world of death and experience death, for we couldn't in the world of life. We couldn't in the world of light and infinite power we had to contract ourselves to experience death. And so we did. Humanity, as we see it, is part of the eternal structure of the universe. It's part of the structure. We actually came down into the part of the structure called man. And entered man. And man is death. And we turn death into sleep and dream the dream of life. Infinite mercy turned death into sleep. And then arose the sexes to work and to weep. And here we are multiplying this form that is man. But you are not the form that you are wearing. You are not this garment. You are God. Everyone in the world is the immortal God. But this experience is essential for an expansion. And there is no limit to expansion. There is a limit only to contraction. So we took the limit of contraction upon ourselves and became man. So her vision was perfect. She saw that box, an elongated.